welcome back to our general math class. In two video lessons, this one and the next lesson, we will talk about quantity. Knowledge on interests, simple and compound interests, are prerequisites to this concept. An annuity is a sequence of payments made at equal periods of time. In this first lesson on annuity, we will focus on simple annuity. So let us start by introducing the classifications of annuities. Annuities may be classified according to payment interval and the interest period as simple annuity and general annuity. Simple annuity is an annuity where payment interval and interest period are the same. While general annuity is an annuity where payment interval and interest period are not the same. Annuities may also be classified according to time of payment as ordinary annuity and annuity due. Ordinary annuity is an annuity where payments are made at the end of each payment interval. While annuity due is an annuity where payments are made at the start of each payment interval. Annuities may also be classified according to duration as annuity certain and contingent annuity. Annuity certain is an annuity in which payments begin and end at definite times. While annuity due is an annuity in which payments extend over an indefinite length of in this lesson, we will focus more on ordinary annuity and annuity certain. The formula to be used for the future value, or F, of an ordinary annuity is F equals R times the binomial 1 plus J raised to the N minus 1 over J, where R is the regular payment, J is the interest rate per period, and N is the number of payments. Meanwhile, the formula to be used for the present value of P of an ordinary annuity is P equals R times 1 minus the binomial 1 plus J raised to the negative N over J. Again, where R is the regular payment, J is the interest rate per period, and N is the number of payments. It's also important to know that the cash value or cash price of a purchase is equal to the down payment plus the present value of the installment payments. So let's apply this in real life practice. Example 1. What is the future value of quarterly payments of 30,500 pesos with an interest rate of 4% compounded quarterly for 10 years? So since the number of payments for the period and the period are the same, then this is a simple and a problem on simple and. So first, what are the given in the problem? The value of R, which is 30,500. And then we also have the value of J, or the interest rate per period, which is the same as I to the M, divided by M in the past lesson, wherein I to the M is this given rate, 4%, so that in decimals is 0 0.04, divided by the number of periods, which is 4 because it is compounded quarterly. So in a year, that is 4. So 0 0.04 divided by 4 is 0 0.01, the value of G. And then we also have the value of N, which is the number of payments in a year, which is the same as M times T in the previous lesson, the number of period, the period which is 4, because again, it is compounded quarterly, and the years regarding the problem, which is 10. So that is 40 from 4 times 10. So we are going to solve for the value of F or the future value. And uh, the formula for F in simple annuity is this. F equals R times this fraction, 1 plus J to the N minus 1 over J. By substitution, R again is 30,500 
1 is a constant in the problem. And then the value of j is 0.01 as we computed earlier. And again, this one is a constant, minus 1. And then the denominator j again is 0.01. And we forgot the exponent n. n is equal to 40. By PEMDAS rule, before multiplication, we have to simplify first uh, the terms inside the grouping symbol, this bracket symbol. And then inside it, when we apply again PEMDAS, we have to simplify this part first. 1 plus 0 0.01. Again, the terms inside the grouping symbol, parentheses. So this is 1.01. And then, since we don't have any terms in grouping symbols anymore, then we have to move to terms or expressions with exponents. That is 1.01 to the 40. By using your calculator, uh, to the nearest 5 decimal places, this is what we get. And then, of course, we'll subtract these two. And you'll get 0 0.48886 divided by 0 0.01. When you divide it by 0 0.01, this is what you will get. 48.886 times 30,500. Therefore, the future value is 1,491,034 pesos and 39 centavos. Example 2. Candy is paying 1,000 pesos monthly for the amount she borrowed at an interest rate of 7.5% compounded monthly. How much did she borrow if she agreed that the loan will be paid in 5 years and 4 months? Again, since the payment interval and the interest period are the same, then this is a problem on simple IMT or which involves simple IMT. Okay, let us start our solution with identifying or enumerating the given in the problem. First, we are given the regular payment of Andy, which is 1,000 pesos. That is the value of R. We also have the value of J or the interest rate per period since the interest rate given is 7.5%. Changing it By changing it to decimals, you'll get 0 0.075 or 75,000 thousands over 12, the number of um, periods, which is 12 because it is monthly. So by getting the quotient, the value of J is 0 0.00625 to the nearest 5 decimal places. Of course, you may round the answer to the nearest 2 decimal places or hundreds or thousands or uh, four decimal places ten thousands or to two hundred uh two hundred thousand places or to more than five decimal places i prefer many decimal places so that when i when i use the value of j in the computation uh the the final answer will not be affected as much by rounding the first okay let us proceed and we are we are also given with the value of n. n in the past lesson is n times t or the period, the number of period that is monthly. So there are 12 months in, in a year. So that's 12 times the required uh, time or value of t, which is 5 years and 4 months. We have to express t in terms of years. So by combining these two years and months, you'll get 5 and 4 over 12 years. And uh, you have to multiply it by 12 to, to get the value of n. You may change it to decimals and then multiply it by 12. But I prefer to change it to an improper fraction because by changing, changing it to an improper fraction, uh, for me, it is easier to solve if it's uh, expressed in terms of, of a fraction because uh, that allows you to cancel or to, to get the lowest terms. 12 divided by 12 is 1, so I'll be left with 1 times 64 over 1. 64 over 1 is 64. 64 times 1 is 64. So that's why they say to just cancel this out, and you'll, uh, you'll be left with 64. 64 times 1. 
Even if you change it to decimals and multiply it by 12, still you will arrive at the same answer, 64. That's the value of n. So these three are the given in the problem, and we are asked to solve for p, or the amount that can be borrowed. Okay, using the formula for simple annuity for the present value, we'll use this equation, the formula P equals R times this fraction, 1 minus quantity 1 plus J raised to the negative N over J. We have value for R, value for J, and value for N. So, we may solve for the value of P. And by substitution, this is what we'll get. And... Uh, of course, we have to use PEMDAS rule, wherein we have to simplify first all the terms inside the parentheses and inside this bracket, or not just parentheses, inside grouping symbols. Inside this grouping symbol bracket, we have brackets, we have this uh, to add them. So we'll simplify this part first. Of course, when we add 1 with this decimal, we will we'll get 1.00625. And that number is raised to negative 64. To the, uh, when raised to the negative 64, okay, when raised to negative 64, uh, we will get 0 0.67115. And then, or that can be real as. 67,115 100,000 and then subtract it from 1 you'll get 0 0.32885 then divide it by this denominator then you'll get 52.6152 times 1,000 is 52,615 pesos and 20 cents so that's the value of P, or the amount that can be valued. Example 3. A down payment of 50,000 pesos was made for a property. The remaining amount is to be settled by paying 3,000 pesos at the end of each month for 8 years. If the interest is 10% compounded monthly, what is the cash price of the property? Okay, again, since the payment interval and the interest period are the same, this problem involves simple and Okay, the given in the problem, first, the value of R or the amount that she pay, that she pays or that is paid regularly, that is 3,000 pesos. The value of J or the interest rate per period, that is 10%, divided by 12. This one, 12. Or 0 0.10 or 0 0.1 divided by 12. To the nearest 5 decimal places, this is the value of J. And we also have the value of N which is the number of payments that is 12 period and the value of t which is 8 years so 12 times 8 is 96 so we have r j and m and first before we may solve for the cash price let us solve first for the value of p Again, this is the formula that we use for solving P in simple time. P equals R times 1 minus quantity 1 plus J to the negative N over J. So again, this is the formula uh, that we will use to solve for P. And by substitution, this is what we will get. R is 3000 times 1 minus 1 plus value of j raised to the, to the negative 96 that is negative n so negative 96 all over the value of j 0 0.00830 
Okay, so we will simplify this part first, the one inside the grouping symbol. 1 plus this decimal is 1.008 BP. And then, of course, we'll raise it to, the, to negative 96 exponent or power. By using your calculator, this is what we'll get. 0 0.45082. And that is 1 minus 0 0.45082 divided by this decimal number again, times 3,000. And then, 1 minus this decimal divided by this number, you'll get 65.92786. And when multiplied by 3,000, you'll get the value of P. 197,783 pesos and 58 centavos. And then since we are asked to solve for the cash price, we will use this formula. Cash price is equal to down payment plus the present value or the value of B. That is, by substitution, the down payment is given in the problem, 50,000 plus the present value to solve for this already, the value of P, or 1,7783.50. Therefore, the cash price is 247,783 pesos and 58 centavos. Until next time!